forecast for 2010, the span of the earthquake is indicated to take most of the year. And further, yes. Yeah. yeah. We still have. We're still pending. I think on three major uh, damaging earthquakes uh, between now and December, and then we'll have hit that um, uh, forecast. Correct. But it it may be moot. It may be absolutely. Um, um, rubbish in terms of we may not care because the volcanic activity uh, may take all of our minds away from that. Right, okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, the again, by the, again, by the way, all of this is tied into solar activity directly. And so we have a solar hiccup on August 1 that is such, as a, such of a strange nature and magnitude that the, quote, experts are, are both in academia, corporate, and government are unable to to label it even, let alone quantify or qualify it. And it is no surprise that we're going to get uh, horrific and strange weather patterns. And you guys are a real example of that, having survived, uh, uh, what, a 100-year or a 1,000-year series of storms up there? We get storms every day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you've got to admit you've had a rough winter here. We've got a we got a rough uh, a rough year all round. Um, four seasons in one day in Scotland, basically. I think la I think last year summer was a Tuesday morning, and uh, <laughs> yes, I, we we have that same joke here. I, yes, I, what are you going to do on summer? Well, it depends on which day it is. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was Tuesday morning uh, last year. I think it was in July sometime, and I slept in and missed it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, now, coming to your own uh, mass of land, uh, that that we know as uh, America, you've kind of said that there's going to be a civil war. Um, can you tell us a wee bit more in detail what you think uh, the, the 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 data has been telling you about? A well, civil war? I hate to apply the word civil to it because here's here's our basic issue. Uh, there's going to be contention, so we have the war language quite well defined, and it, it stems from uh, what we call the revolution uh, meta metadata layer. Uh, let me back up and say that when I first started organizing the data in this uh, IntelliCAD, which is a 3D uh, computer-aided design program that you can get off the Internet, uh, the data seemed to shake out at not only into entities, but across the entities, we would get these data streams where the, for instance, the Terra entity, the powers that be entity, the markets entity, uh, the populous US of A entity, and the global pop uh, entity all would house a uh, subset of language that was uh, behaving the same, and in, in one instance might be the word revolution, and it would would uh, behave the same pretty much in all of these various different entities. And so we call that a metadata layer because it crosses through all of the various different entities. Within the populous US of A entity, we have this uh, metadata layer expressing its ever so slight differences from the other entities in uh, the contention and so on. And so we're going to certainly have that as an issue. But uh, the civil war is a the civil component of it, the idea that it might be a naturally occurring fracture in a populace that would set one part against another, I'm going to have to start disputing because I don't think that there is a natural uh, fracture that exists. And I think that if it comes to any kind of a warfare within the populace of the U.S., that at least some component of it will be directed by the powers that be, the corporate masters, and that they will be fomenting uh, the divisiveness for their own purposes. The, there's a whole lot of contention, don't get me wrong, there, you know, a lot of Americans don't like a lot of other Americans for a lot of different reasons, but there is not a cohesive um, uh, natural fracture line geographically or uh, even racially or um, along any line except any more for uh, the um, level of uh, money or currency. Uh, we do have a, a staggering potential for class warfare uh, within the U.S. and the powers that be usually don't tend to promote class warfare. Uh, the exception might be the 1789 uh, 
uh, French Revolution issues, but as that was actually promoted through Freemasonry, and it appears to be a, a more of a uh, power shift, what we would these days call a regime change, that got out of hand than actual class warfare from its beginning, even though they attempted to use the class separation as the motivating force for the, for the regime change. So uh, you may, from the outside, you may see some of that developing. If so, it'll be 100% uh, manufactured by the powers that be. But nonetheless, that's not to say that we won't, we won't have the contention in the warfare and so on. It's not to say that we won't succumb to that. But there's people like myself and others that are out there saying, uh, basically, as frequently as we can stand to get up and do it, uh, hey, guys, hang on a second. You know, the powers that be are manipulating you. Watch this language. Look what they're telling you to do here. Watch for all this hidden programming. And, you know, they're trying to set you up. There's a, there's a huge war coming. And they want to get everybody fractured this way and that and then let you all loose on each other so they can step back and reap the rewards. Mm -hmm. Well, as we were discussing uh, off here, there was a, a kind of rally, a, a big meet-up uh, in America just the other day there uh, by a few thousand people, if I'm not mistaken, um, who were basically wanting to take the power back. Yeah, and the problem is this, the, from my viewpoint, um, you have to understand I'm not a joiner, uh, I'm more of a loner as an individualistic uh, individual. And so, uh, just my viewpoint, I have a tendency to have a bias on it, but nonetheless, the issue it can be uh, looked at as a level of vulnerability. Once you start having organizations, and once you start having mass crowd demonstration kind of things, then instantly you become a, a target of and vulnerable to the powers that be using the same strategy that they've always used, which is to insinuate themselves into your organization, take it over, subsume it, and direct it to their own needs. So, yeah, there were a whole lot of people that were legitimately showing up there to express their discontent and to attempt to take back or, or whatever, uh, seize the day for their particular viewpoint. But uh, from my viewpoint, that is not an, going to be effective. It's a, even as a demonstration, it, it, it becomes suspect anymore when we know that the powers that be through the government and their corporations are, are actually planting people in crowds, have agent provocateurs, uh, you know, and all of this kind of thing. Plus, the whole... Uh, leader of it is this um, uh, TV personality, this uh, Glenn Beck fellow. Uh, and so, again, in my view of the world, if you rise high enough to get up into the corporate media, you've sold your soul and you're not worth listening to anymore. Yeah. You know, you can, you can only get up into those wor that world by being a toady to the powers that be. Therefore, no matter how much anti-monarchy uh, language you spew, you toe the line and, uh, you know, dip the knee. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, as we've spoke about, you know, and, and, and various people have spoke about, there is going to be um, protests and dem demonstrations across the globe. Um, but that's what they want. <laughs> that's basically what the powers that be, uh, if you see actually see a power, um, that's what the powers that be want, because then they can get out with their, their big sticks and hit us. Well, even even more than that, it's a, and from my viewpoint, it's an issue of manipulation of energy. Uh, you know from personal experience just how hectic and chaotic your life is. And you have X number of calories that you consume every day, and you expend those X number of calories cranking out all this brain power that gets you through only X number of tasks. No matter how long your list is, you never seem to get more than X amount done every day. Mm -hmm. So if you devote a certain amount of your energy to changing the planet, and they are able to subsume that certain amount of energy into useless activity, hey, they've eaten up your energy, the planet isn't going to be changed, you, you get everything sucked out of you, and you, you wonder why nothing has occurred, and it's all because basically they use certain strategies against you, and knowing that you can only devote X amount of calories per day to this task and still be able to survive in your daily environment sure. so it's yet another control mechanism uh -huh. and the you know the ratio is in our favor basically cliff you know um, I, I understand it, it would actually take very little uh, for the entire power structure of the planet to shift it would shift so suddenly that people would wake up in the morning and vast numbers of them 
and uh, literally, uh, or actually, uh, not be able to function because of the cognitive dissonance, the, the shock. But in order for that shift to occur, you would have to have uh, the vast majority of, plan of the humans on the planet start behaving very intelligently and asymmetrically to what's going on. In other words, we can't have an armed revolution when the enemy is where it, it wants us to take that strategy because it owns all of the guns and it knows how to manufacture them and, and how to use them and all of this kind of thing. You can't have a, a revolution in politics when, it, when, the, when they own the political system. In fact, the only kind of revolution you can have that is effective is asymmetric. And believe me, if 60%, um, uh, I don't know if it would even take that large of a number, but some number between, uh, say, 10% and 60% of the Scottish populace that usually votes, if they were to just simply stay home the next voting day and say to themselves, ah, it doesn't matter, my bastard, the other bastard, that's still a bastard, and not bother, then the power structure in Scotland would crumble the day, or two days later. I mean, it would, it would crumble because they depend on the illusion that you're participating in the whole structure. The minute you step out of it and, and have the um, uh, temerity to be a sovereign individual and taking under yourself the consequences of that act and to be smart and asymmetric and, and nonviolent about it, in other words, to be Aikidoistic or, or get a martial art attitude about this where you invite them to attack you so that you can use their energy and throw them mm -hmm. metaphorically, yeah. um, they, you're, the government issues go away. But, of course, that's because the government goes away, and then we've got to figure out how we're going to organize ourselves. Sure. Cliff, we speak the same language, sir. Um, I have said on many, many occasions that there is absolutely no point in going out and demonstrating or getting violent or because the, there's going to be infiltrators anyway um, from the alleged powers that be uh, who are going to infiltrate um, and create problems uh, and it's going to lead to people basically getting their, their skulls cracked. Um, that and also the message I try and get across to people is that they have got the guns and the bullets. You know, we've got the, the, the oh, yeah. yes. You know, we have got the peaceful option, and uh, that's the option we have got to pursue. So uh, I would say again to anybody that's listening, there is absolutely no point if there's a demonstration or a, a big surge of people that aren't happy, and they're going in that direction. I suggest you turn about and go in the opposite direction, because it's only going to lead to uh, further problems. And saying that, on that note, Cliff, we're going to take a wee song uh, break at the moment. And this is a song from a band called Rage Against the Machine and Take the Power Back. <sighs> and you're back with TNSRadio.com, live uh, from 9 till 11. Just to let all the listeners know, guys, we have got shows every night of the week. That's Monday right through to Sunday uh, with different various hosts, with uh, different guests on. Uh, and there's also shows uh, starting off through the day as well. So it's well worth tuning in, guys, and uh, having a listen. It's a vital uh, station if you want to keep up to date with uh, the news and uh, what's happening all around the globe. Uh, meanwhile, we're back with Cliff. How are you doing, Cliff? I'm doing just fine. Got some more coffee and good to go. That's the game, mate. You need the old, you need the old uh, liquid there, don't you? Know, liquid refreshment. Um... <clears throat> well, it's actually curious. I mean, let's take a little bit of a diversion there and deal with coffee as a drug for a, se a second. <laughs> sure. It's, it, it's kind of funny, but uh, the powers that be, which um, you can argue as to who they might be or whatever, uh, but there appears to be a progression in the various forms of socially acceptable drugs that mirror the demands of the corporate masters for specific kinds of mind states in their workers. And you can plot these, the progression of, of drugs from various different sources into global human society over the last 200 years, and they key up almost identically to big um, uh, increases or shifts in the populace into this, corp what, what I now think of as a corporate mindset. So just as an instance, uh, the Buddhist monks that originally brought uh, Camellia sinensis tea to the to the planet would be scandalized by our daily use of the stuff. They only used it to get themselves uh, up for specific meditation needs, and yet here we now use it as part of the industrial revolution to get everybody geared up to a certain level of productivity and have that mechanistically controlled through time on a daily basis 